All right, let's talk about solar today, and more specifically, solar MPPT charge controllers, and more specifically, again, connecting two of them in parallel to the same battery bank. Now, I found a little bit of information online during my research that suggests that it's perfectly fine to do this, but I haven't seen any videos actually demonstrating uh, it being done and how they actually did it. But firstly, why would you want to do this? Now, in my case, I have uh, basically two solar arrays uh, in my motorhome. I've got four panels on the roof, um, total of 600 watts, and I've got two out on the ground, another 300 watts. Now, pumping all of this through one 40 amp MPPT charge controller overlays it. Obviously, um, you know, if you do the maths, 900 watts at 12 volts is 75 amps obviously a 40 amp controller cannot handle that but in reality you never see that 900 watts anyway probably a lot more likely to see 650 to 700 watts but that is still 58 amps which is over the limit of the charge controller that i have yeah you know, it, it doesn't blow up when you plug that much solar into it but it does keep cutting out obviously overheating or yeah over current and it cannot put out more than that 40 amps so a lot of solar is wasted it worked pretty well for me during the winter months when the sun obviously isn't as powerful it's not quite as high in the sky i could connect all those panels to that controller and, and still not overload it. it would be fine but now as we're coming into summer i can't do that and i would like to get a bit more power into my battery so i've got uh, 480 amp hours of lithium batteries there so if they do get drained down quite a lot from using the air conditioner or, or the computer or whatever it can take quite a long time to charge them back up with solar so i would like to be able to get as much as i can into them while the sun's shining now if you watch this channel you'll know that i have an itech world setup so unfortunately when i bought my system they didn't have anything bigger than a 40 amp uh, solar controller they do now they have a 60 amp version i could upgrade to that but it would cost quite a bit of money those 60 amp ones are several hundred dollars even on sale at the moment they're quite expensive it just wouldn't really make a lot of sense for me since i already have the 40 amp what i thought would make more sense for me was get a second 40 amp controller i picked this one up during the black friday sales for 160 bucks i don't know if they're any good i'm not affiliated with these guys or anything like that but uh, for the money i thought it's going to be good enough and of course rather than having one 60 amp controller having two 40 amps gives me more capacity plus also a little bit of redundancy so if one has a fault or you know breaks or whatever um, i'll have the other one at least so i'll have one that works hopefully now as always i'm not an expert on this stuff i am learning i'm getting better at it um, i'm starting to know a fair bit about it but i'm still far from being an expert on this stuff guys so do your own research don't just do what i do what i wanted to know was can you connect two of these charge controllers in parallel to the same battery bank without any problems apparently you can but i want to see what happens when the batteries reach 100 percent and they're both still charging see what happens with that float voltage and you know whether they play nice together obviously you can get solar charge controllers that can talk to each other with a cable you can connect them together i've got two different brands here they won't talk to each other so i'm just going to see how that goes so yeah just a quick overview of my dodgy setup i've got the four panels up here on the roof going into a breaker and then they'll go into a dual 16 mil cable which runs down to the MPPT underneath the floor down here. There's the two panels outside. Now I just have these coming in through the window, the wires. That then goes into one dual core 5 mil cable which runs down underneath the floor. And then from there it will connect into this new MPPT. And from there it will be wired into the existing system. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that all wired in and then see what happens when we turn it on.
All right, super easy to pair the app to the charger. It automatically detected, uh, if we go into the parameter settings here, it detected that we have a lithium and it's a 12 volt system. Saying the battery's at 13.5. We've got, got no solar connected at the moment. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, it is quite overcast today, but we'll go ahead and plug in these panels anyway. Now, if we have a look at the app, we are getting 119 watts there and uh, it's giving us a total with both arrays connected now we're getting 415 watts in while it's cloudy which is pretty freaking good I and mean, there is a tiny bit of sunlight hitting the ground out there but it's definitely filtered through clouds so what i'll do is i'll wait and see if we get full sun today and see how much how much power pumps in from both these arrays and uh, also I want to see, as I said, what happens when that, um, when that state of charge gets to 100%, which, uh, you know, we're only 5% off now, so it won't take too much longer. Even with this cloud over, I think it'll, it'll charge up pretty quick. Now, it's my understanding that the BMS inside these lithium batteries will control the charge and prevent overcharging and all that sort of stuff so that's the new controller down there ticking along nicely doesn't seem to be faulting out or anything but i have noticed on here and i don't know if this is like uh just a feature of mppt and the way it works but the voltage here will occasionally switch up to 20 and then the, the wattage will drop down to like zero or one for a few seconds and then it will go back to 16 volts and whatever wattage it can pump out so yeah i'm not too sure see there we go there it's gone up to 20 volts one watt not sure what it's doing there and it's gone to 19.9 volts 12 watts and then it goes back to 16 point whatever and pumping the power in yet again but, uh, yeah interesting by the way, this is what your system will look like if you don't bother getting bus bars. I've got all my loads and inputs connected to the negative on the uh, shunt there. It works just, but that nut has not much thread <laughs> connecting there. It's, uh, it's pretty well maxed out. I can't put anything else on there now. And all of the positives, of course, are connected to the, uh, the big switch here. Yeah, you know, it works. It just doesn't look as good as a bus bar. Now, just in case any of you are wondering why I've got a security camera here pointed at the battery monitor, um, well, this iTech World system doesn't have any Bluetooth, so I can't monitor it from my phone remotely. But with that connected to the Wi Fi, I, uh, I can. <laughs> I can see it through the security camera and keep an eye on it when I'm away from it. So, yeah, works pretty well. Alright, so we're at 99%. 479 amp hours, one amp hour to go, it says one minute, still charging, hopefully uh, it'll drop into flight mode so it can balance the cells. See what this guy is doing, 13.7 uh, volts it's saying, still pumping in 96 watts. So I've just clicked over 100%, still taking on 280 watts. Right, I'm starting to get a bit worried there. We've hit 14.4 volts, but the uh, charge input has definitely dropped, and the uh, secondary charge controller, the status has changed from MPPT to boost, um, so it's not actually putting in any power at all now. Just the main um, solar controller is still putting in a small amount of power. Definitely dropped off though, it's down to 60 watts. So hopefully that's just a balanced charge. I'll let you know if anything changes. All right, so after a few more minutes, uh, as you can see here, the, both the chargers have effectively stopped charging the batteries. I mean, they have a small draw of seven watts. So we've dropped down to 99%. So yeah, absolutely no worries with overcharging with two MPPT controllers hooked up. Well, these specific two anyway, I can't speak for all of them. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Trendsetters, so would you believe um, that day that I installed the MPPT? It was probably lucky that I did get around to doing it just then because we had a week of cloudy, rainy weather, like it was shit. 
Um, I was really keen to see how much power I could get out of the system now, but it wasn't meant to be. But as I said, I was pretty lucky because, I mean, it's amazing what these MPPT controllers can get from cloudy days. But uh, even today, we're getting a little bit of sun, but it is mostly kind of semi-overcast. But when the uh, the sun's shining, I have seen easily 650 watts exceeded there, which is really cranking the power into those batteries. Very happy with that. But as I mentioned earlier, this is still doing the cycling. Like every 60 seconds, this will it'll drop out. I'll just wait for that to happen. There we go. 20.6 volts, and this has dropped off. And it re it's reflected up here as well, so it's not just saying that. It is actually cutting the power and then yeah, after about 10 seconds it goes back to that. So I'm not sure if there's something wrong with the unit that I've got. I'm going to ask the guys um, if they can give me some advice on that. But yeah, all I know is 10 seconds of lost power every minute is fairly substantial. You don't really want that. My iTech World MPPT controller does not do that at, at all. It, um, it's constantly pumping power in. All right, it has been... Another couple of weeks since I did any filming for this video. This whole thing has been over the period of about three weeks, I think. But anyway, I did end up getting in contact with the guys at Kick Ass and telling them about this little problem with it dropping out. They did get back to me a couple of days later. Um, dude actually phoned me up and said they'd been trying to figure out what was going on with it. But it definitely wasn't expected behavior. They got me to try a few different things. The one thing that did work um, to fix that problem was wiring up my two panels in series rather than parallel i think that at the end of the day the voltage from the panels the 22 volt panels uh, wasn't high enough in parallel to run that mppt they do state in the product manual that the solar voltage has to be at least three volts higher than the current battery voltage i did measure the voltage at the charge controller and those panels were pumping out 19.9 volts. The battery voltage was about 13.5, so that's a solid 6 volts, 6.5 volts above. So I'm not sure why it wasn't working, but yeah, putting those panels in series obviously doubles the voltage, so I was putting in 40 volts then, and the MPPT worked smoothly as expected. That was all fine, but at some point I'm going to just want to be using that one folding solar panel so I'm going to be stuck with 20 volts of solar and that dropping out was not ideal so I ended up actually sending that unit back and they were really good um the customer service I can't complain about it at Kickass they um really good gave me a refund for that product sent me a thing to send it back so I didn't have to pay for shipping or anything and yeah for around about the same money I went with the Victron 130 this thing does the same job it's only a 30 amp rather than a 40 amp but uh, that's perfectly enough for my two panels. So yeah, this one was $166 off eBay shipped. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this one. Make sure you get the Smart Solar um, that has the Bluetooth enabled in it so you can monitor it from your phone or whatever. And so far this thing's been no problem, no dropouts. It can handle running on just 20 volts of solar. Uh, I'm not saying that the Kickass product is bad, guys, but if you're running 20 volt panels, uh, in parallel, it's probably not the best solution for you. If you're running higher voltage panels or in series, then kick ass would be fine. But for me, this one is doing the job. It is a nice little unit. It's quite solid. Um, I do like it. It's got nice big cooling fins on the bottom there. I've got the uh, app here showing, and you'll see it stays steady. It doesn't drop out at all. The wattage, if we go over to the history, so it's a nice app. It doesn't look as polished as the Kickass app, but it's got all the information you need. So of course, um, the weather is crap and has been for about three weeks. It is only early in the morning, but um, yeah, it's cloudy again. While I was waiting for this one to arrive, I actually moved my other iTech World uh, DC to DC MPPT from under the floor here. So it's much easier to access in here and it's a little bit cooler. This gets a bit more airflow. But unfortunately that means I need somewhere else to mount this guy because that's where the kick-ass one was. So yeah, now I've got all the major components apart from the AC charger. That's still under there, but I never have to touch that. It's fine. Uh, all the major components are up under here. I've attached this bit of uh, high-density plastic to this foamy shit here. Um, I'm going to attach that to the side there. Now what I realised is I should have drilled the holes for mounting that before I attached it in there um, so I can't get a drill in there because of all this crap but uh, I'm just going to 
throw in some holes i think with a heated up drill bit and stick it in there to make some holes but yeah other than that it's been super easy obviously i had all the wiring ready to go it just had to be wired up same as the other one but uh it is working all right let's see what kind of mess i can make here oh yeah check out my steampunk fan set up here i did have a pedestal fan in here for a while uh, running off 240 volts but obviously it's not very power efficient this is a bunch of computer fans that i had laying around i touched it <laughs> clipped on perfectly to my gopro mount for this um gorilla um thing so i can move it around simply turn it on runs off 12 volts moves the air around in here pretty freaking good and only uses five watts love it in case you can't tell i absolutely love all this 12 volt stuff dicking around with all this crap it's <laughs> it's fun man <laughs> So making these holes to mount this thing was actually, it worked out better than I could have hoped for. <laughs> Let's just see if I've got them in the right spot. Must have torch in mouth for this job. I love it when a plan comes together. Alrighty, that is it. We are done with the installing of the new solar controller, the Victron. Now uh, working happily there alongside the iTech World 40 amp. Let's see what we're getting up here. 36 watts, nice and steady. And uh, from both systems together, getting 136 watts. Uh, now if you think that's bad, this is why. This is the reality of uh, Queensland for the last four or five weeks. So yeah, no, no actual sunshine. And it is still eight o'clock in the morning. Gee, I'm pretty happy with this whole setup now. The only other two things I may add at some point in the future. One is a fuse box um, just for all my 12 volt loads. Um, I've currently got them all running off in line fuses. It will just tidy things up a lot and make it easier for me to isolate stuff if I need to. And the other thing is a cooling fan. If I want to you know, positively ventilate this whole uh, compartment here just to keep all the bits and pieces cool. But uh, yeah, there you go guys. Good result in the end, finally. Got two MPPTs working harmoniously together. I will add on a bit more at the end of this video if uh, when we get to 100%, if we ever do get to 100%, um, there's any issue with these two MPPTs, but I don't think there will be. So yeah, I just need to uh, put all these covers back on and that's it. All done for today. <sighs> Another dreary day here in Queensland, folks, but I am eking my way up to 100% on this thing for you guys. Managing my power. The old Victron is scraping up 20 watts through those clouds so yeah we'll get to get to 100 percent see what happens just for uh just for science sake okay so for those interested as soon as the voltage the battery voltage there hit 14.2 the uh, victron went into absorption mode and took a little longer for this one to hit 14.2 volts because i think it reads a little bit lower um but yeah sitting pretty on 100 percent or 99 percent so all good there you have it guys hopefully this video has been of help to somebody out there probably not but who knows <laughs> as i said i love playing around with this 12 volt stuff so i've enjoyed it and uh, hopefully it wasn't a complete waste of time filming it so it's just started raining again so happy days i'll see you guys on the next video cheers